Well, thank you for joining us by way of a live stream. Welcome to everyone here in the auditorium of the church. I want to tell you something. Uh, God is moving. He, he's, he's doing things before we go live, and he's moving by his spirit today. If you normally follow our uh, live stream, notice we went live a little bit later today than we normally do. That's because God is moving by his spirit, and we'd like to have you come and uh, be a part of it. If you could come and join us, we're at the corner of uh, 21st and, uh, is this 20? Yeah, 21st. <laughs> 21st and Crawford, uh, not Crawford. Yeah, Crawford. I, 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 I'm in the spirit, not in the natural. But uh, 21st and Crawford, we're right here on the corner and we're right across from Franklin School. If you could come out and join us on Sunday morning, we'd love to have you. We're appreciative of the fact that you join us by way of live stream and we're glad for that. But uh, if you could ever come out and join us, we'd love to have you. And God is moving and God is going to continue to move. And so we just uh, praise the Lord for that. Let's take our Bibles in our hands just a minute. And uh, we do this every Sunday. We want to wave them around just a little bit. And we say, this is the word of God. This is the word of God. Let's try that again. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. The word is a lamp unto my feet. The word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. And a light unto my path. I receive the light. I receive the light. Yeah. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. Because it is impossible. Because it is impossible. For God to lie. For God to lie. Woo! Hallelujah. We believe that. We believe that. And, and I tell you what, God, God is doesn't lie, and God is not a respecter of persons. What he does for one, he'll do for all who simply take him at his word and believe him. Amen. Thank you. We want to take God at his word and believe him. His word is true. Well, we've been talking about learning to be led by the spirit of God. We're still talking about that today. And I want you to know how important this is. Because in life, especially in these dark and dangerous times in which we live, you are not going to navigate safely and securely and, and successfully through life without help. In fact, we need all the help we can get. Amen. 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 And in fact, uh, I think about you know, the, the Beatles. Uh, many of you have heard of the Beatles. The Beatles wrote in their song, I get by with a little help from my friends. But I want you to know God has made provision for you and for me as children of God to do far more than just get by. Hallelujah. Amen. He has made provision. He said he has given us life and he has given it to us more abundantly. Thank God Thank Jesus you, has given us life and he has made provision that we can have that life to the full. Glory to God. Yes. Now. Thank you. I want to I talk about that today. He has provided us all the help we need to do it. You see, the Holy Ghost, and I know a lot of people anymore provide, prefer that you say Holy Spirit. That's fine. Holy Spirit's correct, but I like to say Holy Ghost. All right? The, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost provides help from within. You have the helper. I want you to know that you have the helper living in you as a believer. The Holy Ghost provides help from within. Now, more times than not, unfortunately, people are looking, and I'm talking about believers, more times than not, people are looking everywhere else other than from within to get help. We get into a crisis situation. We get into a problem. We're real quick just to want to grab the phone and talk to somebody. And that's good. We need to get people to get into agreement with us and pray. Or we might contact our friends or we might, uh, I, I know some people, unfortunately, that even go to the newspaper. And I, I've known some Christians like this who go to the newspaper and read the horoscope every day. 
But I want you to know I'm not I, I don't I don't have to look to the stars. I want you to know that I know the one who, who created the stars. Amen. And I know the Amen. one who named those stars and called Amen. every one of them by their name. He knows exactly how many of them that there are because he made them. I can go to him, but look, look, the helper, the helper is living in you as a believer. Amen. 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 Now, in the last days of his ministry, Jesus said a great deal about the Holy Spirit. In fact, it's been said that last words that someone speaks before they leave this earth are the most important words. And so Jesus spent the last hours of his life on earth in the upper room with his disciples, teaching them about the Helper teaching them about the Spirit of God. Now, those teachings are found in your Bibles in John chapters 14 through 16. We're only going to look at one of those teachings today, and it's found in John's Gospel chapter 16. John's Gospel chapter 16, verse 13. So if you have your Bibles, let's turn to John's Gospel chapter 16, and verse 13, I got to tell you, during the course of the week, I do a lot of meditating in the Word of God. I tell you what, by the time I get here on Sunday morning, I am so pumped about the Word, I can hardly stand it. Hallelujah. Because I know that in this book, in this book, in the teachings of this book, are, is everything that you need for instruction in life. Hallelujah. This Bible is your instruction manual for living life. Amen. Amen. So John chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus is speaking. This is in the red part of your Bible if you have a red letter edition. And Jesus says here, and in uh, verse uh, 23, 23 no, the, the 13, I said, didn't I? 16, 13, pardon me. 16, 13, I was testing you. Uh, John 16, 13. However, when he, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Yes. May God add his blessing to the reading of the word. I really like how this is uh, rendered in the Amplified Bible as well. The Amplified reads there, but when he, the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole full truth, for he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell you whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him, and he will announce and declare to you the things that are come, uh, that are to come, rather, that will happen in the future. Hallelujah. Lightfoot in his commentary, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> pardon me. Lightfoot in his commentary says this, For the Holy Spirit is sent as an instructor from the Son, as the Son is sent as a Redeemer from the Father. That's good. Consider with me, first of all, the Spirit of Truth. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, He is the Spirit of of truth. In fact, this is literally in the from the Greek text, you find the definite article there. So it says uh, literally, he is the spirit of the truth. I want you to know that the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, speaks the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. In fact, the Holy Spirit, and it's so important that we grasp this, especially in this day and hour when deceiving spirits have been unleashed and some of those deceiving spirits are even making their way into the church. Yep. 
Okay? And so here it is. Here it is. The Holy Spirit will always speak in line with and agreement with the written word of God. If you say, if someone says the Holy Spirit is speaking to them or the Holy Spirit has told them something and it is at variance with the written word of God, you can be certain that the Spirit of God did not say that. The Holy Spirit <laughs> does not speak contrary to or at variance with the written word of God. It's so important that we get that. The Holy Spirit, in fact, will reveal the truth of Scripture to you and me. He will reveal the truth of Scripture. As you're reading the Word of God, believe for the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you and reveal to you the truth. <laughs> you cannot grasp, and, it took, you know, and, and I know so many people that try to do this. But you cannot grasp the depths of God's word merely on the mental or intellectual level. Yeah. You cannot grasp the depths of God's word merely on the mental or intellectual level. You need it revealed to your spirit. You need what we call revelation knowledge. In fact, you'll recall in the 16th chapter of Matthew's gospel. Jesus, the Bible said, had come into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi. And he asked his disciples, he said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Well, some are saying Elijah. Some are saying Jeremiah. Some are saying one of the prophets. But then he drilled right down and he said, But who do you say that I am? Peter spoke up. And he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You know, Jesus said there, he said, flesh and blood hath not revealed that to you, but my father, which is in heaven. Jesus, uh, Peter knew who Jesus was by revelation knowledge. And Jesus said right there, he said, by that, upon that revelation of who Jesus is, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I'd like to explore that a little bit and take a side journey there, but I'm not going to do that for lack of time. So, all right. Praise the Lord. But, but just know that was revealed to Peter by the Spirit of of truth. Not only that, the Spirit guides. Didn't Jesus say there in that 13th verse, He will guide you into all truth. He will guide is the Greek hadegeo. Hadegeo means to guide, to show the way, or to instruct. In fact, Rick Renner in his Sparkling Gems from the Greek, Volume 2, he says this about that Greek word, hodegeo. I want to read it. Quote, the Greek word hodegeo describes the guiding ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Jesus was informing us that if we are willing to listen to the Holy Spirit and to follow his instructions, he will act as a guide for our lives. Like the tour guides discussed in the example above in the, in the devotional, he talks about a tour guide. The Holy Spirit knows what lies ahead of us. He knows the obstacles we should avoid. He sees our ultimate destination, and he knows God's plan for our lives down to the smallest detail. The Holy Spirit knows every route God desires for us to take, and if we are willing to follow the Spirit's leading, he will give us a wonderful and memorable experience along the path of life, unquote. See, he guides into all truth. He guides us into all truth. We're talking about learning to be led by the Spirit of God. He guides into all truth. Jesus did not say, I want you to notice, that the Holy Spirit would compel, that is, obligate or force us into all truth. And quite honestly, sometimes I wish that he would, but he doesn't. 
He doesn't compel or force us into all truth. In fact, he didn't say the Holy Spirit would carry us into all truth. He said he will guide us into all truth. And our responsibility is to follow. The Holy Spirit cannot guide you or me in any area we're not willing to go. He will guide. He will guide. He, it's our responsibility to follow. He leads the way. We have to put in the time and the effort to study the truth, trusting that the Holy Spirit will help us. I want you to know something. When you are right in the midst of a crisis... That is not a time to run and try to find your Bible and try to find a promise that covers what you're facing. What we need to be doing on a daily basis is building a foundation of the Word of God in our life, hiding the Word in our heart. And in those moments when we're in crisis, when, we're, when our back is against the wall, glory to God, the Holy Spirit will reach down in that deposit of the Word and pull that Word out of your spirit that you need at that exact moment and then as that word is pulled out of your heart and you speak that word with your mouth, that word becomes a sharp two-edged sword, praise God, that will slice the enemy and his work to bits. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory Woo. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to emphasize, though, that he guides us into all truth. He reveals the truth, but he never leads in opposition to or contrary to the written word of God. That's right. Now someone says, you already said that, Pastor Kevin. Why are you emphasizing that? Because it is so necessary that we emphasize that. Because I am hearing from people in this hour that are saying the Holy Spirit is telling them things that I promise you the Holy Spirit is not telling them. Why? Because I can go to the Word and what they're saying the Spirit is telling them is contrary to the Word. I'm going to tell you something. I reject anything that someone comes along and they say, well, this is a revelation I received from the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you something. What you, what you need to do, the Bible says, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they be of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And I want to tell you something. Those false prophets, some of them are on Christian TV. Some of those false prophets are in Christian radio. Some of those false prophets write so-called Christian books. But I'm going to tell you what they're saying is at variance with the Word of God. And what you better do and make up your mind is that you're going to stick with the thus saith the Lord authority of the Word of God. If I may borrow a line from my dear brother Rick Renner, that is the only way you're going to keep your head on straight in a world that has gone completely crazy. Amen. Yep. Amen. Do you know this world is crazy? Yes. yes. This world's crazy. Yeah. Things, that, things that used to be unheard of, and I'm not going to go into them, but they're done today and they're being pushed as completely normal and it's just crazy. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, the only way you're going to walk through that minefield safely and securely is to keep your eyes on the book. Keep your eyes in the book. Don't let this word depart from before your eyes, praise God. Meditate in it day and night. And that's how the Bible says that you make your way prosperous. That is how you're going to have good success by sticking with the word of God. As the late Hilton Sutton told me, it is our place of safety. And there has never been a time those words are more true. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's our place of safety. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Kevin, you've got to hurry. Okay, I will. Yeah. He speaks and he shows. He speaks and he shows. The Holy Spirit speaks. 
Never forget that. The Holy Spirit speaks. He spoke in the past, but he speaks today too. He speaks though. He communicates with your spirit. He communicates with your spirit. He is not speaking to your mind. He does not speak to you through your feelings, which are the voice of your body. He speaks spirit to spirit. And here's what happens. This is why it is so important, not only that you're born again, but that you get your mind renewed. See, your mind, your, your, your will, your emotions, that, that soulish part of you, here's how it works. You have the Spirit of God, and you have your regenerated human spirit. But the, but, but the, but the linkage, I, I, I think about this big motor home that Joyce Ann and I lived in for a, a few months. It, it, it was a nice old motor home. I guarantee you, whoever built that motor home, it was not meant for winter in Iowa. I promise you that. I promise you it was made for probably Arizona. But regardless, we were in this motor home, but this old motor home had a problem. The linkage on the transmission wouldn't always engage. Uh -oh. And so, what you'd have to do, you'd have to get under the thing and manually take the linkage of the transmission and move it so it would go into gear. Why now, 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 yes, unfortunately. Yes, while it was running. <laughs> Yeah, you better be fast. No, just kidding. But but yeah, while it was running, you had to you had to get under there and you had to move that linkage. Anyway, the illustration I was trying to get from that is this: that your soul is the linkage between you, your spirit, the real part of you, and the Holy Spirit. You see, this is why it's so important for your mind to be renewed to the Word of God because what happens is your regenerated human spirit always wants to go in the direction of the Spirit. Your regenerated human spirit always wants to do what the Word says. But when your mind is not renewed to the world and you're still thinking in worldly thinking, your soul will take sides against your spirit. And then if your flesh has not been put under the authority of your spirit man, that is, if you have not brought your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, acceptable unto God, what will happen is your soul and your body will take sides against your, against your spirit and you'll be moving in a direction contrary to how you, you ought to be going. And so that soul, that soul part of you, the mind, the will, and the emotions is a link, is the link between your spirit and the Holy Spirit. And you see, you got to get it all in line so you're going the direction of God. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. Amen. Now here it is. Here it is. Hallelujah. If we will listen and respond, boy, let me say that again. If we will listen, if we will do what? Listen. Listen. How I many of you know you need to listen? Yes. Huh? Now, now, now here, here, here's what I want to give you a little tip about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not like some people. You say, well, that's, that's not a revelation. No, I think it will be. Hang on a second. Some people, when you're talking, they will talk over you and insert their thoughts while you're speaking. You know, you'll be saying something and all of a sudden, for example, yeah, you know, I, I, I heard of this person, they had a pain in their right leg, and they need, and all of a sudden somebody pops up and they say, yeah, did you see that brown dog over there? Just pop up something that is completely unrelated. And they'll just jump right in and pop right over you. But let me tell you something, here's where the Holy Spirit's different. The Holy Spirit will not talk over you. The Holy Spirit if you're going to do all the talking, the Holy Spirit won't say anything. 
That's why I'm telling you, you've got to learn to listen and get quiet enough in his presence because more times than not, he'll speak through that still small voice down on the inside of you and you get such a still small voice, you've got to be listening to hear it. Huh? Listen. So if we will listen and receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit, this will change our lives, folks, I'm telling you. We can avoid many problems and take advantage of opportunities that we otherwise would miss if we would learn to listen to and cooperate with the Holy Spirit. There's a chain of command, if you will, in the Godhead. The Holy Spirit speaks what he hears. The Father speaks to Jesus the Son. The Son speaks to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. We should expect to receive guidance from heaven. Yeah. Remember we read in Psalm 18, 20, 28, For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. And we said, what is the candle? Well, Proverbs 20, 27 says, The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, enlightening all the inward parts of the belly. In other words, all the parts of the inner man, the Holy Spirit will illuminate us. Hallelujah. We can expect to receive that. And here's something else. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. And this is literally, he will declare to you the things that are coming. We don't have to walk in fear concerning what lies ahead. We don't have to walk in the dark. Why? Because the Holy Ghost will reveal to you things to come. I can remember... Oh, I could give a lot of illustrations of this, but I'm going to give just this one. My mother-in-law, who is in heaven now, she changed addresses from earth to heaven back in 1993. July 4th, 1993, she went out with a bang. Hallelujah. But uh, anyway, I can remember, see, she had had colon cancer, and she'd been told, what was the initially? She was going to live three months, was it, or six well, months? Well, he says he'd never seen anybody live over three months. No, no, yeah, as bad as she was, because what happened, she had a tumor that burst in her body that spread cancer throughout her entire body. And even with operating, they said we couldn't get it all. They came out crying. They loved her, and they came out crying. It was uh, the doctors. doctors did, the surgeon and the, and the doctor, attending physician. He said we didn't get all the ca cancer, so we're just going to send her home basically to die. And they said, we've never seen anyone live longer than three months and has cancer this bad. Now, Joyce Ann and her family, they began to pray. They called up to Oral Roberts at the prayer tower and got different ones praying. Well, that three months turned into six months. Well, after six months, the doctor said, well, we've never seen anybody live longer than a year. Well, a year came and went, and she was still living. Now, fast forward 17 years. Praise the Lord. Fast Praise forward 17 years. She not only lived, but she thrived. She was stronger and healthier than most young people I know. And she what? She raced with the kids. She ripped, shortly before she went home to be with Jesus, she ran from our church with the kids because we were just lived a few blocks from our church in Perry. She raced. The kids at, what, 81 years old, 80, whatever she was, she raced the kids, and I think she won. Uh-huh, yeah. I think she won. Yeah. Well, anyway, long, okay, all that, say this. <laughs> We're coming home one day, and all this time, they had been giving her pill form of chemo, okay? Even though they said she had a clear bill of health, they were giving her chemo, just in case. So we're coming home one day, driving down the street, and right on the inside of me, I heard the Spirit of God say, your mother-in-law has leukemia. Tell your wife she has leukemia.
to prepare. She's going to come home to me. She has leukemia. Yes. Now, I said to Joyce Ann, I said, uh, honey, the Holy Spirit tells me your mom has leukemia. She's, oh, no, 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 no. You, know, you don't want to accept something like that. She said, oh, no. I said, okay. So I just put it on a back burner. Long story short, she went home as a result of having leukemia. She wanted to go home. She wanted to go home. She was tired of her race. She ran her race. She wanted to go and be with my father-in-law. She wanted to go home to Jesus. So she did on July 4th, 1993. Now, I said all that to say this, and that is the Holy Spirit in that showed me what was coming. What was coming. See, it has been said that God knows the future better than we know the past, and that is true. But watch this. The whole truth is, though, God lives in the future. It's hard to wrap your finite brain around that. God lives in the future because what happened? What happened was God carved out a piece of eternity, and he inserted it into the earth realm, and he called it time. But he lives outside of time. Time to God is like a wheel, a wagon wheel. God sits on the very hub and he can look down any spoke that he wants to at any time. And he can insert himself into that time. Boy, I, I, we, we could get into that. I don't have time to do that. Time. Don't have time to do that. Don't have time to talk about time. Hallelujah. So let's just wrap up. We need to learn to discern the Spirit's leading. We need to learn to discern how it is the Holy Spirit speaks to us. He definitely speaks at times in the spectacular things like dreams, visions, gifts of the Spirit, angelic visitation. But his leading in our life is always supernatural. He speaks to us as he reveals Scripture to our spirit and illuminates our understanding of it because it is the God-breathed Word. He speaks through the inward witness, which is the primary way in which he leads us, he speaks through the inward voice, the still small voice, which we call conscience. He speaks through the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is stronger, louder, and more authoritative. And we'll look at that and more next time. Be ready. Father, we thank you for your holy written word. We thank you that we've been able to get into it today. We ask you to bless this word to the understanding of your people, and we just give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now we put your, his name on you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. As we do every week, we declare that you were blessed coming in, you're blessed going out, and you were blessed in all that you set your hands to this week in the name of Jesus. Greet one another as you go today and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.